Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm at this undisclosed location because we have the one and only four-door American muscle car. This is a 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack. And as you can see, Scat Pat wide body. Let's talk a little bit about Dodge and the Charger. So Dodge started so many years ago, right at the turn of the century, the Dodge brothers forming their own company. So many things have changed over the years, but one thing that is so true, even to this day, is that when it comes to muscle car performance, Dodge is really bringing it, and they're bringing it in a big way. Now, there once was upon a time during the actual muscle car era where you would say if a car had four doors, it was two doors too many. I'm here to tell you that with this Charger, having the four doors does not take away performance one bit, does not take away that muscle car identity one bit, and what it does is it gives you not only the ability to have performance, but also have that versatility of the additional doors. Now, I know a lot of you have commented, written me letters, uh, you know, sent a messenger pigeon here and there about the Charger should be two doors. I get what you're saying. The original Charger, and if we go back to 1966, that's when the first Charger hit the streets. They were just two doors. The reason why you will never see a two-door Charger is because of a other car called the Challenger. That car today still has two doors, has always had two doors, and they would just compete against one another for shelf space, and Dodge does not want that. One thing to rest assured is that when it comes to Mopar, which remember Mopar stands for motor parts, Mopar no car right here with this indigo blue awesome color. And I love the names, it's just called indigo. Makes sense, indigo, love it. Let's go ahead and dive into this 2020 Charger Scat Pat wide body. So you can see the flare fenders, we're talking about an additional three inches of width not one, not two, three, over three inches of width. I think it's like 3.3 inches of width. You can see how the flare fender comes all the way down and runs nicely into the front fascia. As we come across the front, I do really love the styling. You know, the way that they took the Charger, and it's not really a retro muscle car in the sense that it's trying to mimic the original Charger, but where it sets itself apart is with some unique styling. I love the full LED headlight design with the daytime running lamps, everything blacked out. We drop down, you're gonna get functional air vents, side curtain, the whole nine yards, all in one. Nice extension to the low front fascia here. And as we come across that angry looking grill, flat black with the scat pack, uh, pack badge, the bumblebee, that design goes back to the muscle car era. Scat Pack goes all the way back to the muscle car era, and here it is today. One of my favorite parts of the design of the front of the Charger is this open area right here. Looks great, very sinister. You drop down, we have more functional grill, and it matches, which is a nice touch. Flat black. Would have been nice if they had a low lip extension, but other than that, from one side to the other, this thing's going to eat you up, spit you out, and then do a burnout on whatever's left. When we go up onto the hood, the Scat Pack has this functional front scoop. Nothing says muscle car more than not only a power bulge in the hood, but definitely a hood scoop. But from one side to the other, you just see how menacing this car is. Now, as we come around the bend, check out the specific wheels to the Scat Pack. Flat gray, 20 inch wheel, 11 inch on the width of the wheel. What that means is at all four corners, you have 305s keeping you connected to the pavement. Now, what that means is, believe it or not, on uh, you know, a test track, this could get over 0.98 Gs worth of grip. To put that in perspective for you, the C8 Corvette is right at one, maybe a little bit higher, maybe like 1.03. This does 0.98, which is unbelievable, considering the car is about 4,500 pounds. You can see the massive six-piston Brembo caliper, the size of Ronald McDonald's head, two-piece rotors. So we're not just talking about a steel rotor, we're talking about two-piece rotor, aluminum hat, got that beautiful rotor, and really these tires, the way they just wrap around the wheels, low 35 series profile. Underneath all the body work, you're gonna find beefed up suspension, anti-roll bars, all that good stuff to help you perform 
different than your standard charger. Now, going into that fender, nothing says Mopar more than a Hemi. This has got it. Underneath that hood, 6.4 liters of yumminess, 392 cubic inch. That's what that means, 485 horsepower. Color matched on the mirrors, that indigo, beautiful color. No sunroof on this trim, flat black. I love the lower sill, the way it kind of flares out, tucks back in, and then comes back to the rear. Strong, powerful line. Even let me go back up a little bit here. I think one of my favorite parts of the styling is that nice scallop shape that's kind of carved out of the driver's door and the way that hard edge just comes all the way back to those meaty, like I said, 305s. They're like steamrollers, all four corners. We get to the back. Another thing that definitely says muscle car when it comes to Mopar is a beautiful flat black trunk lid spoiler. You got the blacked out badging. There's our Bumblebee again. And I think the tail lights on these chargers are drop dead sexy, full LED all the way across. Looks dynamite. dynamite. We come down, very simple diffuser. I would like to see, I'm gonna zonk this. I would like to see something a little bit different, but I like the oval slash tip exhaust says muscle car all day. Let's go ahead, pop the hood and see the muscle that's underneath it. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts underneath the hood. Is that Mopar muscle? You're looking at that 392. That's a 392 cubic inch engine, 6.4 liter V8, 485 horsepower, 475 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds, quarter mile in 12.4, and it weighs around, like I said, almost 4,500 pounds. It is mated to a slick shifting ZF eight speed automatic transmission. And what's really wonderful about this setup is that it's usable power. Are there faster chargers? Yes, you could get a charger Hellcat. You could get, uh, they have the Hellcat Daytona for 2020. It's got 717 horsepower. This power is totally usable and guess what? that old adage, smoke them if you got them, you could definitely turn plumes of smoke out of this scat pack. But talking about it's great, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what it sounds like. guys we're inside our four-door muscle car i know many of you are going to want to debate with me and you can put that in the comment section if you think four-door muscle car is insanity go ahead and put it down there i'm fine with that but this definitely is a muscle car i know you're probably saying well joe if it's got plenty of power it probably has a high price actually not too shabby for what you're getting msrp the way that this one is option is around fifty two thousand dollars let's see what you get for the money now i love with the chargers especially this one, what they did with the interior. The two-tone red with the black fits it wonderful. You have soft touch material across the whole top of the door panel, the stitch work, and I love the angular stitching that they got with the back portion of the red there. Dark armrest with the red stitching, a nice pocket down there where you could put your ding-dongs, Twinkies, ho-hos, and hold them into place as you rip down the quarter mile, and then when you get to the end, take a swig of some milk, some victory milk like you won the Indy 500. We got our 392 badge, our little scat pack bumblebee there, love it. Stitch work, look at how they made the same stitch work. Thank you, Dodge, for doing that. What's interesting is if you look at the interior of this charger and look at a charger from uh, the late 60s, it, mimic it mimics it in a lot of ways, especially with the way everything is shaped. You have that 8.4 inch Uconnect system, love this system. Climate control, go through the screen. You could go into your seat controls, heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheels. So you have it totally covered there. Then my favorite part is you hit this guy here. We're gonna wait a few seconds while that's downloading. You have your black start stop button, radio controls, easy to get to. And of course you keep dropping down. You have your AC controls and then a wonderful cubby for your circus peanuts, your drag racing circus peanuts. You got a 12 volt. This right here is for your, your time slips. So you're gonna put your time slips nicely down here. Eight speed ZF transmission, really slick shifting. They say it shifts within nanoseconds. I haven't measured it yet, but we will do that. Let's go back to infotainment system now that we're downloaded. Here's our performance pages. Look at the gauges. You could actually click on it and then go back. 
We go down here, look at this, oil temp, oil pressure, battery voltage, coolage temp. That's what you want from a muscle car. We even have a G meter and you can have all your engine parameters all nicely set up, really easy to rock and roll. Speaking of rock and rolling, we then can then hit this. You can set your line lock, your launch control, shift lights. This is, if you live your life a quarter mile at a time, you better be in some type of charger or challenger and definitely this one. If we get back to where we were talking about on the center console here, it is a little bit harder, but you know what? You're not really seeing it too much. I do like the silver here. Tasteful lid for the cup holders. And then armrest is soft, same stitch work. Open it up, guess what? We have a nice tray. This is a little party tray for your guests. M&Ms, Skittles, peanuts, they could take it with them after they crap themselves when you rip them down the quarter mile. You have two USBs, an aux jack, another 12 volt, and a place to put breath mints. Because you know what? You smoke these tires up, you don't want that smoky taste in your mouth, pop in a breath mint, and then you can make out. Fold that down, seats, love them. Leather, the Alcantara suede, love the bumblebee, the perforated center. My only complaint is that they're too big. They feel like lazy boy recliners, which is a good thing for the longer drive. You do have, if you notice, power controls for the passenger and the driver. I just would like a little bit more bolstering, especially with the intentions of this being a little wider and maybe hit up a couple twisties, even though uh, she's a little heavier, she still wants to dance and, and I like that, but the seats for the long haul and for the drag strip are very, very comfortable. Plenty of headroom, put on your helmet as you rip down the quarter mile. Get on over here though to the business end. I wanna show you behind the wheel of this charger. All right guys, business end, you can see the Controls, easy to get to. You got your bolstering, which is really nice. What would have been an extra touch is if the seat belts were red, but they're not. They're just regular black, but that's okay. Seating position's great. Steering wheel, I like the thickness. You got the famous Dodge badge here. A Little bit of flat silver, flat black on the buttons. This is where it looks a little dated and I would like to see this update, so I am gonna zonk it. I know these are for functions that this car doesn't have, but it just looks weird to have the dead buttons right there like that. You do have these paddle shifters, which I wish they were a little bigger and I wish they were made out of metal. Uh, so that's a zonk. But the dash on the money looks so classic, but 21st century at the first time. So you have your analog tack, speedometer, and then look at this. You can scroll through a plethora. If you go back to this gauge, look at this. Gauge, gauge. So you could go through all these different gauges, which is awesome. All that different information and it's clear as a whistle. Looking out over the hood, you see the bulge that lets you know you have muscle. Let's check out the back seat and see how your passengers are gonna feel living a quarter mile of their life at a time. All right guys, back seat time, plenty of room. What's nice is being six feet tall, I was able to get in and out of the, the opening of the door very nicely. Leather all the way around, a little bit of plastic right here, um, but you do have nice pockets with felt lining. You can put your abacus in there. If you're trying to measure out the quarter mile time the old fashioned way like the Greeks and the Romans did. Uh, you do have heated seats, two USBs, and an uh, AC vents back here, which is a nice touch. Seating position is great, plenty of headroom. Let's check out the armrest, nice, soft. How do they do that? They must be doing something special, those Dodge brothers. Lift it up, Skittles galore. Just load the rainbow up, and when you're going down the quarter mile, pop them after every single foot, all 1,320 of them. Two cup holders, looks good. Fold it back. Let's go ahead and check out the trunk and see how much space we have. All right, guys, time to check out what type of drag racing gear can we get into the back? Because remember, if you're gonna take this to track, bring the kids with you, you wanna have some, maybe a room that maybe you have some slicks you wanna put on or something, you hit the button, rises nicely, large opening. So you could actually get a pair of wheels with slicks mounted back here, not a problem. Even get a jack stand, uh, a couple jack stands and a jack, have that done, get the kids involved, take them to the drag strip, show them where it is safe to take a car like this and have a blast and keep that car passion going. But I don't know about you, if you're ready, I'm ready, we have them, let's smoke them, let's go. All right guys, we're in the 2020 Dodge Charger Scat Pack Wide Body. It's very interesting because driving this car, especially with the wide body and everything, you, you really feel like you're giving everybody the middle finger. You're like, drive your Prius, drive your SUV, 
I'm gonna be in my 6.4 liter 392 cubic inch Mopar. So wide in the lane, but you know what? This is what it's all about. It's a four-door muscle car. There's never been a time before in history where you can say, yeah, I got a four-door muscle car. You know, it's always been two doors too many. With this Charger Scat Pack wide body, it gives you the best of both worlds. If, if you need the flexibility of having four doors, a large trunk, um, you know, the, 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 the one zonk for me driving is gonna be there's no manual. It'd be nice to be able to row through a six-speed manual in the Charger Scat Pack. Um, you do have that slick shifting eight-speed, that ZF eight-speed, very fast shifting. And you do have a lot of technology in this car with the whole performance pages and you have line lock, launch control, the whole nine yards in this thing. But driving down the road here, doing basically the speed limit, it's very comfortable. The seats are probably as comfortable as you're gonna get in this type of car compared to the Camaro and compared to the Mustang. These seats by far are larger. Uh, the cushions are larger, the whole real estate area of the seat is larger, which makes it more comfortable. Now bolstering, it's pretty much nil. Even up top, it, it, it doesn't hold you in very well. And you'll see when we get to the twisty bits, um, I'm gonna be definitely bracing myself on the dead pedal for this, this car to hold myself in place. Uh, visibility is great. I love seeing the power bulge hood, really gives you that whole muscle car feel. Visibility is actually really awesome in this thing. Back window, you can see a little bit of the flat black kick up from the, the trunk spoiler. But other than that, controls are easy to get to. Uh, the 8.4 inch uh, Uconnect system is one of the best, I think, right now with functionality, colors, crispness, reaction, uh, and then you have all of the amenities, heated seats, ventilated seats, the whole, uh, the whole shabam. Armrests are a little on the firmer side, but they're at a good height. And uh, I just wish that the paddles were a little bit larger uh, for when you want to shift manually. But other than that, uh, this thing is a beast. The red interior just kind of goes with the indigo. Uh, it's just enough to brighten up the interior, make you say, hey, uh, I'm in something special. And definitely for daily driving, for getting the power to the ground, it's already hard enough getting 485 horsepower down through those rear wheels. Uh, I really think that this is the better way to go over a Hellcat. If if you're confident uh, with your manhood and everything, that should not be an issue. Uh, if you want the Hellcat, go for it. Want a Hellcat wide body, go for it. Um, but I really think that for the price point, you're getting so much performance for the money and, and just so smooth. Now, yes, the 305s at the front can be a little darty at times and they can sort of follow those ruts that trucks the 18 wheelers kind of lay down the road but wait until we get to the twisties this thing like i said almost a g on the skid pad is very very uh respectable all right guys i have it in sport mode and i have it in manual shift mode want to go through that eight speed automatic myself let's see how we do through these little twisties so on throttle on the brakes, those massive six piston calipers. Clamp it down, here we go. All the way through. I tell you, the front end really sticks. On the brakes, downshift once. Woo, yeah, look at this, here we go. Nice, not a lot of body roll, which is what you don't wanna see. You don't wanna see a bunch of body roll, like a boat rocking all over the place. And to be honest with you, for the weight of this car, She's light on her feet. She really, really is. Nice, smooth shifts. I love the sound of the V8. I mean, that naturally aspirated V8 helps put down the power progressively. You got that nice linear torque curve. Really just a nice overall layout of this car. And with the 305s at all four corners, she really sticks and awesome feedback to the steering wheel. All right, guys, I have line lock set. Left foot down the brake, on throttle, smoke them if you got them, release. Look at that smoke coming off the back, shifting through the gearbox. Wow. This thing is a monster. Downshift once, here we go into this nice left-hand bend. Super smooth, 
back on throttle. That V8 just pulls, just pulls. Massive calipers on those rotors. Here we go. Let's see, we're gonna see how she does through this nice right-left transition. I'm actually gonna give a little bit of space to the car in front of it, but you can see with that line lock, you could do your smoky burnout, release, and you're off like a rocket ship. But on throttle, second gear, here we go. <laughs> on the brakes here, look at this, nice. Wonderful, look at this. Sounds great. The shifts with the man, I just wish the paddles were a little bit larger. Just a little bit larger. It's like I, I kind of have to make sure I stay right at the tippy top of the paddle. And for me, that's, that's too much focus that I need to put on that task. If it had larger paddles, you want your focus to be on where you're directing your eyes. You always look where you want to go and you need to be looking through the turn at that exit point so that you can hit your marks appropriately. And the great news is with the electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel, you can get nice setup on the, on the wheel and on the seat and everything. But when it comes to uh, the paddles, uh, I wish there was a way to rectify that, to be honest with you. All right, guys, another time through the twisties. Here we go, second gear. Love that sound on the brakes. Feels good. Nice, look at this, look at this, wow. The front end grip is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And, and there is a track mode setting, but I'm trying to keep everything within check. Don't want to do anything super silly in this scat pack wide body. But uh, let me let that car, there was a car a little bit in front of us. I want to let that get out of the way so that we can enjoy the rest of these twisty bits here. But on throttle, first gear, you just spin them up, man. Look at that. Third gear, super smooth through this transition. Look at this. Wow, holds a line nice on throttle. On the brakes, feel good. Look at this, downshift. Nice. Wow, look how smooth this is. I love how when you get close to redline, that whole digital display in between the tech and the speedometer turns bright red. I just wish the gear indicator was nice and large in the center. Uh, and maybe there's a way to go through the systems and whatnot, but um, I really, really wish that I could see at a quick glance what gear I'm in, because with eight speeds, it's kind of hard to really tell where you are exactly in the gearbox. But definitely the sound, the grip, is she like a GT350? No, of course not, they're two different cars. But definitely surprising with the weight of this car, the four-door capability, and, and just everything else. I mean, this thing is really a bad mamma jamma. All right, guys, one last time just for you. Here we go. On throttle, second gear, third gear, fourth. On the brakes, downshift once. Nice and smooth. Yeah, that V8 sound, here we go. Yeah! Nice fast shifts on the brakes. Downshift once, look at this, through this left, right. Wow, the grip, nice. She gets hustling fast, very, very fast, very fast. She loves to dance though, I'll give her that. Look at this, oh my God, this thing is awesome. <sighs> this is what it's about guys, being a car enthusiast. So glad that Dodge is making cars like these. Yes, this is mostly meant for straight line performance, but as you can see, we were, we were jamming in the twisties a little bit there, but we're gonna wrap this one up. I'll see you back at the undisclosed location in a split second. Um, so we'll be right back. All right, guys, it's been one of those muscle car magical moments here on Rady's Rides. So glad to be able to share this Charger Scat Pack with you. Is it the perfect car? No, but definitely if you want a car 
that is gonna relive that muscle car era. And now, you know what? You have some kids, you're a little bit older, and you need that room, you got the four door capability. This one nails it on the head, and the best part is usable horsepower. You could have a million horsepower, if you can't get it to the ground, it's worthless. But I definitely wanna thank everybody over at Dodge for allowing us access to this press fleet vehicle. If these are the types of vehicles that you wanna keep seeing on Radies Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. I know it's a muscle car moment for big guns and his, mu his own muscles. It's nice to compare muscles from time to time. I think the Chargers got you beat, Tom, but thank you for your hard work as always. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.